Hello and welcome to the iPod Shuffle 2nd Gen Ultimate Repair Guide. Um, pretty much the only thing that goes wrong with these is the battery. I mean, there is other things, like the buttons can fail sometimes. We can fix those just by cleaning them. Or you might have a faulty headphone jack, which you can replace. So, let's just get into it. Because there's no screen on this model, obviously. So, yeah, a lot of the issues that we usually have are just not a problem on the, on the shuffles. So, yeah, let's get started. So, to open it up. Just get your box cutter knife and yeah, prying off the top and bottom plastics just similarly to how we did in the on the rest of the nanos or similar to the mini. And the top one, well they are just held on with double sided tape but the top one's also got some clips on it as well. So just be careful of those. And yeah, you've got those two switches sitting on the top piece, the shuffle button and the on off button and those just just sit there so just take those out um, and now there's a metal sheet on both the top and the bottom and it's just held in by two screws so just get out your screwdriver and undo those and they are all the same screw as well so you don't have to worry about mixing them up and yeah those are the only screws on the whole device so yeah Yep. And after you've done that, you can simply remove those just by getting your tweezers and reaching under there. They are like notched on one side, so it stays in, as you'll be able to see. So. Mm -hmm. Now we just have to push that um, whole assembly out. It just comes, slides out the bottom in one piece. So I like to do this by pushing on it with the tweezers from the top. There's like that that metal cover thing that covers over where the battery is, you can push on that. You don't really want to be bending any of the parts off the PCB or anything, so don't... Yeah. And now, if you do have an expanded battery, um, it can be a lot harder to remove. Like, yeah, you'll have to use a lot more force, obviously, because that battery will be pressing up against the uh, housing. Another thing you want to watch out for is the, uh, the buttons on the housing are just held in with a bit of rubber. Yeah, if, if that rubber rips, the buttons are just... They just come straight out. Um, so yeah, if those buttons do rip, you probably have to just get either another button assembly or another housing or something. And now just inspecting the PCB. Just inspect for any water damage if, if it's not powering on or anything. If you do see any corrosion, that'll probably be the reason why. Um, yeah, and just taking that captain tape off. Yeah, you don't have to do that. If, it's, if you're literally just doing a battery replacement, you can leave that tape on. But if you want to do the headphone jack as well or yeah, and since on this model it does charge through the headphone jack, if you're not, if you're getting no power at all, you can try replacing that headphone jack. Yeah, because if the headphone jack doesn't work, you won't be able to charge either, since the port doubles. So yeah, you can you can always try replacing the headphone jack if you're getting no power. Um, yeah, and I also just want to mention this little coil down here at the bottom. Quite often it can come off when you're removing it from the housing or putting it back in. Um, it's just, yeah, those coils, they stick up quite a lot compared to the rest of the components on the board. And they're in some pretty inconvenient spots. So they can, quite often they can snap off. And when that happens, um, the, yeah, the iPod just won't power on. Yeah, so it can happen when you're reinstalling it. And it can also happen if you have an expanded battery and you're taking it out quite often. But yeah, th those are replaceable, but you will need a um, auto rework station. And I'll put in a clip of me replacing it. But um, yeah, I mean, not everybody has has one of those. Not everybody has a hot air, hot air rework station or the skills required to replace it. But yeah, if you do, and if you do break that off, it is an easy fix. You just need to get another one, obviously, which, well, you can poach them from other iPods a lot of the time because a lot of other dead iPods will just have random calls on them. And, well, that's what I do if it breaks most of the time for me. Yeah, and I've had to do that like maybe 10 or 20 times because I repaired quite a few of these now. Yeah, so just removing that battery, it is just like glued down sort of thing, so just pry up a little bit. And yeah, as you can see, there was this like little 
it's like a hard glue that goes over the two solder joints there so before you actually try soldering anything what you want to do is remove that um, what I like to do is just heat it up first a little bit at a low temperature and then it'll turn gooey and then you can just use the tweezers to remove it but, uh, you don't have to use heat if you just use the tweezers it'll just crumble anyways you know, I just think this is a bit cleaner and yeah that just pulls straight off like that and yeah you do need obviously need to solder to replace the battery on this so just chuck on a bit of flux heat up those joints and the battery will just come straight off there you go and yeah just clean those pads up a little bit because they do use um what do you call it lead free solder you might just want to replace it with leaded solder because it works better and yeah here's the replacement battery that i have now the wires on this one were a bit long so i ended up just cutting them cutting them down so it'll fit more appropriately but uh yeah the main thing you want to look for with a re aftermarket replacement battery is the thickness because if you get one that's like slightly too thick I don't know, you may have trouble getting it back in properly or, yeah, just, you might run into issues and stuff like that. But yeah, you should be, you should be alright, like 99% of the time, it's just if you get a dodgy one or something, I don't know. There are a lot of dodgy replacement parts out there, so, yeah. There's no real way to know what is and isn't dodgy, you just sort of have to buy and try, I guess. And if you find something good, just go with that, but yeah. Also, I'll put a picture of what, like, what a good solder joint should look like, because I, I don't know, maybe a lot of people doing these... This might be like your first time ever soldering and, I don't know, you might not know what a good solder joint looks like, so I'll just put a picture up. Yeah, you want like a decent size, you want you want the wire to be fully in the solder and you want it to be a, a decent sized blob, not oversized, not, yeah, not hanging over, not spiky, not like fully oxidized solder. You just want nice smooth round solder with the wire fully in there. So yeah, I'll, I'll, just, I'll put a picture of what to do and what not to do. And yeah, I'm just cleaning up that flux. I assume most people would know how to solder if they're interested in stuff like this, but, you know, if it's your first time and you just don't know, I mean, yeah. And yeah, just put that battery back in, in a way that, with the wires tucked out of the way, in whatever way that makes it as thin as possible. And now just grabbing some captain tape and putting it back over like how it was before. And yeah, you'll want to secure that headphone jack back down with a bit of double-sided tape as well, just to sort of keep it in place while you're putting it all in so you don't rip the flex cable or anything like that. Um, I should probably also mention when you buy like batteries and stuff like replacement batteries They'll usually come like 50% charged so or they should anyways because that's how you're supposed to store them for long periods of time So yeah, when you get them straight away Just when you first install them just plug them in and charge them like up to 100% straight away Is usually the most healthy thing you can do for a new battery Because I know like if you just take it and drain it 50% all the way down to zero and then you don't use it for like a month that can be pretty bad for the health of the battery. That can like do some long-term permanent damage. They don't like to be sitting below sort of like three or 3.2 volts or whatever for long periods of time on the lithium ion batteries. Because if, if, if that happens, it can like, the voltage can just keep dropping and dropping and dropping. And then if it sits at zero for like months on end, then that can kill your lithium ion battery. So you just want to make sure you charge it up fully as soon as you get them installed. And there you go. And now this is a good point to just test it all out. Plug it in, I know I don't do it in the video, but yeah, just plug it in a, a computer, see if iTunes recognizes it, and then maybe charge it up for a little bit, unplug it and see if it's holding a charge. And yeah, just putting that all back in. Shouldn't be too much resistance. I mean, if you, some of the aftermarket batteries can be thicker than others, so, I don't know. Yeah, and you got to make sure you're pushing it in sort of straight as well. If you push it in at like more at an angle with one side going in further than the other, then it can get stuck. Yeah, and obviously be careful of the coil as well. Because that's how you can break it when putting it back in. <laughs> and yeah, now just screwing down those top and bottom metal sheets the same way that they came out. And yeah, they are nubbed. So make sure you put that nub side in first. And yeah, simply just screwing them down. Yeah, so as you can see, this is a pretty straightforward and easy to repair iPod compared to a lot of the other models. There's not much to it, it's really just the battery. And yeah, now just for those top and bottom plastics, 
So for the top one, you want to put those buttons in first. Yeah, both the uh, lock switch and the... Oh, well, it's not a lock switch, a power switch. And the uh, shuffle button. They just go in like this. With the green side facing inward and the white side facing outward. And yeah, just putting that top plastic cover back on. You could put some new adhesive on that, but I find the old adhesive on these is pretty... Like, it retains its stickiness a lot better than some of the other models. Plus, that one's got clips on it as well. So, the clips are what's holding, doing most of the work there. And, yeah, just make sure those switches are working properly. And, yeah, for the bottom one, you could use the old adhesive. It'll, it'll probably stick fine, and you probably probably won't fall off. But, just for the sake of the video, we'll put on some... We'll put on some new adhesive. There you go. Yeah, just some double-sided tape will do. And then cutting it out and making sure you've got none near that headphone jack. Because if you do... Yeah, if it covers over the headphone jack, obviously it's going to gunk it up. So, yeah, just put peel it back if that's what's happened. Yeah, like that with the tweezers. Now just simply putting that back in. And there you go. Perfectly good fixed iPod shuffle second gen and yeah you can just give that a spray down and a wipe down with the isopropyl alcohol get it looking nice again yeah also just when replacing the uh, headphone jack all you have to do is well it's just that flex cable there so there'll be like I think it's yeah five or six little there's little pads, just put some flux on that, put some solder, take it off, get the new one, put it on. You can either get a new one online or you can just take one off of another one. And yeah, yeah. so if you're having the no power issue or it's not charging or anything like that, it might just be due to a faulty uh, headphone jack since that does double as the uh, charger and the headphone jack, obviously. So yeah. Oh yeah, so if you're having trouble with iTunes, um, there is a dedicated iPod reset utility for this model. I'll put a link to it in the description. Um, but sometimes, like, iTunes won't detect it or it'll say it's corrupted or whatever. And it won't let you fix it through iTunes. Like, a lot of the other iPods have a recovery mode in iTunes when you plug them in and they're faulty. But this one has its own dedicated tool. So, yeah, if, if it is plugging in and making all these USB sounds but it's not coming up in iTunes, you can always just try with the uh, iPod reset utility. But, yes, yeah, you simply just plug it in. It'll detect. It'll say restore. You click restore. And there you go. You're all good to go. And it'll just work normally from there on out. It happens on quite a few of them, so it's not like pretty common, yeah. And yeah, if you do have like water damage issues or something, I don't know, just toss it, get another one. Not worth it. It's not worth messing around with water damage on these. Oh yeah, in order to fix dead buttons, um, it's just simply like a trace, a metal dome, and a bit of tape on top. And what can happen is the um, you can get some corrosion happening in between that metal dome and the trace which will prevent it from registering a click. So in order to fix that, you can simply just peel off that tape, um, get out your tweezers and scrape back the dome as well as the trace on the logic board. Just scrape back that corrosion. Sometimes it'll be very visible, other times it'll just be a light layer. And then what you can do after that is take a cotton bud with some isopropyl alcohol and wipe it down. And then to put it back together, just put that dome back where it was, get some, you can use the same captain tape or you can just get some more and Put, place it on top and there you go your buttons will be fixed that same process works for many of the buttons across all of apple's ipods i've done it in a lot of videos in the past as well yes yeah, so these ipods are still pretty good i mean they're really small really light a lot of people still use them just for like running is probably one of the best use cases because you don't have to take your phone and you just clip it onto your clothes you don't have a big bulky phone rattling around in your pocket which can be very annoying if you're exercising or working out so yeah these these ipods are still probably pretty popular I still have their place yeah and a lot of people still use them so yeah that's pretty much it for this one thanks for watching uh, if you want to buy one of these check out check out my ebay store i sell them refurbished if you if you have one that you want to get fixed just i have a contact email in the description um just yeah send me a message i can do a, a mail-in repair for anybody in australia if you would like so yeah let me know um yeah thanks for watching hope to see you in the next one bye